Hi everyone, in today's video we're going to be looking at limits. The concept of a limit is the idea of what value a function approaches as we get closer and closer to a given x value. The way that we look at this in general form is we write lin, which is short for limits, right? Underneath that we write x with a little arrow, a of f of x is equals to l. The way that we read this out in full is we say the limit as x tends to a of f of x is equal to some value l. Let's do a short investigation of limits by looking at what is the limit, okay? As x approaches negative 1 of the function f of x, right, where f of x is defined as a half x squared, okay? This is simply just a parabola. So what we are asking is, what is the limit as x approaches negative 1 of a half x squared? Okay. So in order for us to investigate this, I have a table of data. Okay. We are going to have x values that we're going to plug into our f of x. And that's going to give us output f of x. Okay. Now, we know that f of negative 1, right, is simply 0.5. And we can see that on the graph in here. But we are not actually interested in what the function equals at negative 1. Rather, what we are more interested in is what is the function doing, right, as we approach negative 1 from the right hand side and on the left hand side okay so in order to do that we're going to choose right x values getting closer and closer to negative one from the right and x values getting closer and closer to negative one on the left okay and you can see that represented in the table of data um, alongside so if we start by picking x values, right, which are approaching negative 1 from the right, okay, we're looking at these top values up here. And then once we're approaching negative 1 from the left, we're looking at these bottom values over here. So let's just quickly evaluate all the f of x which correspond to the specific x values. Okay, and that's our table completely filled out. And we can see that as x approaches negative 1, okay, both from the right hand side and from the left hand side, the values of f of x are approaching, right, 0 0.5. Okay, so we say that the limit as x tends to negative 1 of a half x squared is equal to 0 0.5. Okay. Now, because the definition of a limit is what is the function value as we get closer and closer to a given point, the function doesn't necessarily have to be defined at that point for the limit to exist. Okay. So the question arises, how do you evaluate a limit? Well, we can evaluate limits graphically like we just did, or algebraically, which is what we're going to concentrate on. We evaluate a limit algebraically by simply plugging in the x value of interest, so long as doing so does not result in division by zero. Okay, so basically, how do we evaluate a limit? First thing is by direct substitution. Secondly, is through manipulation if direct substitution leads to a division by zero. If we look at the first example, we are asking what is the limit as x tends to 3 of x plus 3 divided by x squared plus 3x. Okay. First thing is just do direct substitution. Right? If you substitute 3, most importantly concentrate on the denominator, 
If you substitute 3 in your denominator, you will get 3 squared, which is 9, plus 3 times 3, which is 9. And, well, that's not going to be 0, so with this limit, we are just simply going to evaluate it through direct substitution. So you're going to say that the limit as x tends to 3, right, is equals to 3 plus 3 divided by 3 squared plus 3 times 3. Okay, so 3 plus 3 is 6. Then for the denominator, we have 3 squared, which is 9, plus 3 times 3, which is 9. So 9 plus 9 is 18. Okay, so we have 6 divided by 18, which simplifies to just one third. So the limit as x tends to 3 of x plus 3 divided by x squared plus 3x is equals to one third. Let's look at the next example. We have the limit as x tends to 3 of x plus 3 divided by x squared plus 3. Okay? The first thing we do is we simply do direct substitution. If you substitute 3 into your denominator, you'll get 3 squared plus 3, which is 9 plus 3, and that is not equal to 0. So then we can evaluate this limit through direct substitution. So we have the limit is x tends to 3 of 3 plus 3 divided by 3 squared plus 3. 3 plus 3 is 6, 3 squared is 9, 9 plus 3 is 12. Okay, so then this simplifies to 1 half. So the limit as x tends to 3, right, of x plus 3 divided by x squared plus 3 is 1 half. Now for the next example. What is the limit as x tends to 3 of x squared minus 9 divided by 3 minus x? Okay. Now, if you substitute 3 into your denominator, you'll see you'll get 3 minus 3, which is 0. Right? And if direct substitution leads to division by 0, then we have to go into manipulation. Okay. For this specific limit, we see that we're going to manipulate it through a difference of two squares. So this is equals to the limit as x tends to 3, right? And we can manipulate the numerator to look as x plus 3 times x minus 3. This is all divided by x minus 3. Okay. This then allows us to cancel out the problematic term of x minus 3. So now... We are left to evaluate the limit as x tends to 3 of simply x plus 3, right? And this is just a linear graph, right, that has an x-intercept at minus 3 and a y-intercept at 3, okay? But because our initial graph was not defined at the value of x is equal to 3, right, We have to modify this sketch by putting a hole at x is equal to 3. Right? If you now do direct substitution, right, you'll see that the limit as x tends to 3 of x plus 3 is simply 3 plus 3, which is equal to 6. Now, it is important to notice that even though the function is not defined at, a, at x is equal to 3, the limit as x tends to 3 does exist and it's equals to 6. Right? This is because as we approach 3 from both the right hand side and the left hand side, right, the function is approaching a value of 6. Now let's look at example number 4. Okay. We're now asking, what is the limit as x tends to minus 3 
of the function x plus b divided by x squared plus b. Notice that this function is exactly the same as the function that we dealt with in the first example. But now, instead of approaching positive 3, we are asking what happens when we approach negative 3. Right. So when you substitute negative 3 into the denominator, you get negative 3 squared, which is 9, right? Plus 3 times negative 3, right? Which is going to be negative 9, right? So positive 9 minus 9 will cause a division by 0, okay? And because we have a division by 0, we now have to manipulate this function. So then we say that this is equals to the limit as x approaches negative 3 of x plus 3. And we can see that in the denominator, we can take out a common factor of x, right? That leaves us with x plus 3. Okay. That means that the problematic term of x plus 3 then just cancels, it, cancels each other out leaving us to evaluate the limit as x approaches negative 3 of a new function 1 over x, right? And we know that 1 over x is simply a hyperbolic function in the positive quadrants. Okay? But because the initial function was not defined at x is equal to minus 3, we have to modify this function, okay, by putting a hole at x is equal to minus 3. These holes that we are putting into the function are called removable discontinuities, right? So all that means is that the function is discontinuous at the point x is equal to minus 3, right? So now we can go back to simply just direct substitution because when we direct substitute into the function 1 over x, we are not going to be dividing by 0. So then this is now equals to 1 over negative 3, which is simply negative 1 third. Okay, so this means that as we approach 3 from both the right hand side and the left hand side, okay, the function is approaching a y value. Of negative one third. Now it is also possible for the limit as x tends to some value of x to not exist. And this occurs for examples where our function has an asymptote. This is called a non-removable discontinuity. Let's take for example trying to evaluate the limit as x approaches 1 of the function x plus 1 divided by x minus 1. Okay? This function, if we had to graph it, has a vertical asymptote at x is equals to 1. And it basically has the same shape as a hyperbolic function. Okay, it has an x intercept at minus one and a y intercept at minus one. Okay, so now we are now asking the question, right, what is the function doing, right, as we approach x is equals to 1, right. So, let's check. When we approach x is equals to 1 from the right hand side, okay, so in other words, we pick values closer and closer to 1, okay, coming from the right hand side, right, we see that the function is going up to positive infinity, okay? And when we approach, right, 1 left hand side, okay, we see that the function simply just goes off to negative infinity.
right? And now because the right hand limit and the left hand limit are not equal to each other, we see that this limit does not exist, right? We can also think about this in an algebraic sense because if we look at this um, function, there is no way for us to manipulate this so as to avoid division by zero, right? So therefore, the limit as x tends to 1 does not exist. And we abbreviate this by writing d n e, right? d n e means does not exist, right? And the reason for this is simply because our function is a vertical asymptote at x is equal to 1. And it doesn't matter which side we approach the value of x is equal to 1, the function doesn't approach any specific value, but instead goes off to positive and negative infinity. Okay, and that's it for limits. In the next lesson, we will look at how to use the idea of limits to develop the definition of a derivative function. See you next time.